Hello, my name is Mia Festa, and I decided to dedicate my intellectual AV um, mix to racism in America and in the modern day. I decided to do this because I feel as if racism and segregation is still very prominent uh, in today's society, and after gaining more knowledge about it through this class, um, I'm fully aware of the movements um, and the moments that I have actually been um, a bystander in racist acts. There are many videos on the internet um, of people being racist and I felt that in our modern day and world, many of us have conflicts that come from racial, racial slurs or even worse. I think that this topic also touches um, me because I, f I just like um, others I want what's right and um, for the people and that is to be equal, for all of us to be considered equal. I think that for many years um, the term equality has been stated throughout America and should still be prominent no matter what happens. The people who stood first for the rights of African Americans are well known today and it should stay like this and um, the reason that they were able to make a difference in the world is because they stood up for what they believe in. So first, I would like to start off by introducing Martin Luther King Jr.'s speech, I Had a Dream, um, for Equality and the Civil Rights Era. I'm happy to join with you today in what will go down in history as the greatest demonstration for freedom in the history of our nation. Five score years ago, a great American in whose symbolic shadow we stand today signed the Emancipation Proclamation. This momentous decree came as a great beacon light of hope to millions of Negro slaves who had been seared in the flames of withering injustice. It came as a joyous daybreak to end the long night of their captivity. But 100 years later, the Negro still is not free. 100 years later, the life of the Negro is still sadly crippled by the manacles of segregation and the chains of discrimination. One hundred years later, the Negro lives on a lonely island of poverty. I have a dream that one day this nation will rise up and live out the true meaning of its creed. We hold these truths to be self-evident that all men are created equal. I would also like to add in a TED Talk I found by Megan Ming Francis, who spoke on behalf of racism in today's society and how it is still prominent. She talked about um, many issues and basically just discovering the root cause to racial injustice. I just finished teaching Introduction to American Politics to a group of eager undergraduates. This was my first year teaching, but I had pulled off a slamming lecture and I was feeling good about myself. As I left the classroom, I looked down at my phone and saw that I had five missed calls from my brother, Kenny. At the time, Kenny was a student, in living, a student at Temple University and living in North Philly. For those who don't know North Philly, it's an area that is predominantly black and low income with a very visible police presence. When I return his phone call, Kenny is loud and swearing into the phone. I can tell that something very bad happened, but I'm not sure what. When I am finally able to get him to calm down, he tells me how he was sitting on the stoop of his building talking to a friend 
when four police officers ran up on him and threw him and three others on the ground, handcuffed them and then pushed them up against a wall, all the while asking them, what drugs do you have? What drugs do you have? Kenny had no drugs. He told the officers this many times, but each statement of no drugs only seemed to provoke more force and make the officers more upset. As Kenny sat cuffed and slumped against a brick wall, he quietly told the officers that he was a student at Temple University and without reason, they could not hold him. The officers finally retrieved his college ID, which was in his wallet that had slipped out when he was slammed to the pavement, realized that he was indeed in college without drugs and then let him go. After Kenny told me the story, he was still loud and upset. I was shaking barely able to hold the phone to my ear, all of the joy from my great day of teaching gone and replaced with a deep sense of helplessness and alarm. I wanted to remove the hurt and frustration that Kenny felt that I could hear so clearly through the phone, but I neither had the will nor the ability to lie to him about the mightiness of American racism. And we both silently knew that this would not be the last time that he would be stopped and frisked by the police for drugs. I chose this video because I believe that racism is still all around the world. No matter how many times justice was shed on the topic, it will always be there. I think that in today's society, cops are always making assumptions based on skin color without fully understanding the situation as a whole. In the story that was told by Megan, um, the cops were making, the cops wrongfully made the assumption that the kid had drugs on him all because of his skin color. I think that without people acting out on this, there will be no justice nor any more change. I have picked a song made by Beacon Light called Colorblind, which is a song dedicated to racism. It was made in response to the multiple shootings that had happened in the year of 2015. This song is written for the purpose of taking a stand against racism and putting a stop to it once and for all. Black skills, black feet in the black night. Running fast for black dogs with a black bite. Should I act white? Cause what I've heard is only black is darkness and white is good is like the light. Right, right. Black Bible, white pages, black ink. You was wrong by the white races, black stink. But white man's white plans are white bars. That's why they built these white walls. I'm praying that they might. Fall. I guess we're colorblind. I guess we're colorblind. Black in our skin to all the ways of our creator. For we made us in this image, but we are some image haters. I guess we're colorblind. I guess we're colorblind. Just black, just white, mixed together, all gray. We would never meant to be this way. All I see are shades of gray. This rain pours down my window pane. Yeah. All I see are shades of gray. This rain pours down my window window pane. Looking through this window, all I see is pain. I guess I call it window pain. A white widow looking out a white window. Bit by a black widow. Ironically, that's widow pain. A little poison with a little rain. A little boy was killed, his skin was stained. At least that's what they thought, and so he hangs. I once heard a white Christian man point the finger in his hand and black skin and say it was the mark of change. Dang, so twisted. But I heard the same and yet the opposite from a black Christian. So I guess we're all the mark of Cain. Since we kill each other, we're clearly disabled. Slang. I got some black family that don't even know it yet. My white family never seems to grab a hold of it. But my true kin is every tone, every color. Painted red on my sisters and my brothers. But I guess we're colorblind. I guess we're colorblind. My next song um, I chose is written by Jeremiah titled, The World Needs More Love. I thought this was an important message um, that he conveyed and that I needed to add into my mix because I do agree that the world needs more love and happiness for everyone around them and everyone in it. If the world did not have love, then there would be no happy days and no justice. Still 